Now for this next part, we've got to find the values of t when p is instantaneously at rest. And what I've done is I've updated v with the answer we found in the previous part. We had to express v in terms of t. So when is p going to be instantaneously at rest? Well, it's going to be when v equals 0. So that's what we're going to do, that when v equals 0, just substitute it in this equation. And we therefore have t squared over 2 minus 4t plus 6 equals 0. Now I'm going to solve this equation for t, but at the end, what I want to do is show you what's going on with this particle at the various times that we find um, for this, okay? So you might want to fast forward to the end if you're happy with this so far and you're quite happy with getting t. If not, anyway, what I would want to do is times by 2 throughout. So if we do that, we get t squared minus 8t plus 12 equals 0. And this will factorize. We've got a couple of brackets here. And it's going to be a t and a t. And then we're going to have minus 2 and minus 6. Check that out, you will get that. So therefore, each factor could equal 0. So two, sorry, t minus 2 could equal 0, or t minus 6 could equal 0. And if we add 2 to both sides, that leads us to t equals 2. And if we add 6 to both sides, t equals 6. So our particle then is at instantaneous rest at 2 and 6 seconds. So we've got our values of t. Now it would be quite good just to make sure that we've got some appreciation of what's going on here. Not that you have to do this for this question as such, but uh, what I'm going to do is show you a velocity time graph and an acceleration time graph for the movement of this particle. And we've got the two equations here for v and a, and I've drawn them out here. For v, we've got a quadratic equation. It's positive, positive t squared, so it's going to be u-shaped. And these values, when t equals 2, t equals 6, we have seen that v equals 0 at. And when t equals 0, v equals 6, as we've got up here. And you can also see that there's this point of symmetry here, when t equals 4, that we get this point here, where if you put t equals 4 into the equation here, you get minus 2. And the acceleration graph is linear, okay? You can see that when you put t equals naught in, you get minus 4 down here. And when t equals 4, you get the acceleration is 0. So what is actually happening then with this particle? Well, by looking at these graphs then, we can see that it starts off then at 6 meters per second, moving to the right. After 2 seconds, okay, it stops. That's because we've got an acceleration which is negative. So it's slowing it down. As it goes from here, it starts to slow down. 2 seconds later, it stops. The acceleration then at 2 seconds is still negative, so it heads back in the other direction. At 4 seconds, it's moving at a speed of 2 meters per second to the left. The acceleration is 0. But then after the 4 seconds, the acceleration becomes positive. So although it's moving to the left, the acceleration is now directed towards the right. So it's starting to slow down. Six seconds later, it stops. And then the acceleration being positive still, it starts to speed up and moves again to the right. So we've got this effect where it, moving at this speed, slows down, stops. Two seconds, speeds up, and then starts to slow down again and then stops at 6 seconds and speeds up and moves out to the right, speeding up all the time. 
Okay, so I hope that's given you some idea anyway. Um, as I say, you don't need to draw these, but uh, they might be of some value to you, especially in later questions where you have to draw velocity time graphs and acceleration time graphs. Okay, there we go. That's the end of this part of the question then.